if you're just tuning in, we were chatting about these things called death cafes out west, and we were talking about our struggle as Christians to connect in a culture um, where before people would love to hear about Jesus because Americans were just generally Christian people, and not anymore. Um, and so you, you may be wondering in frustration uh, the same thing that Psychology Today wondered aloud in a recent article called, Why is it so hard to change hearts and minds? Okay. Why is it so hard to change people's hearts and minds? It is hard. And we're frustrated by it as Christians often. Like, what's wrong with these people? Just listen. It's true. It's good news. Just listen. <laughs> if you would just listen to me, mm-hmm. your life would be so much more fulfilling in Jesus. It's true. So uh, they start off by saying politically the U.S. is more divided than ever, and in an election year, discussions are getting heated, potentially leading to some awkward moments on the playground, at the dinner table, or on social media. This has caused many of us to struggle on how to talk to people who viewed uh, who views differ than ours and how to convince people to change their views. We'd like to do that. So first of all, they established something we've all probably heard of called confirmation bias. Mm-hmm. It's a human, a well-documented human problem, which we have a tendency to seek out information that confirms our existing views and avoid information that contradicts it. Which is why whenever Ron and I over the last nine years have talked about a study that gives difficult mm-hmm. information to Christians, We'll hear a, a we'll see a flood of text messages going. Ah, it's a bad survey. Don't like that one. I'm sure it's flawed. But if there, we share a study with good news, we're like, wow, great! I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't approach life that way because pe- people do that, and to make it worse, social media has an algorithm designed to confirm your biases. Mm-hmm. You click on this, it's going to give you more. Uh, and on top of that, we tend to hang out with people who agree with us, and so. It becomes shocking when someone has a new idea. You're like, what's wrong with these people? So what do we do? First of all, research indicates that throwing data at people isn't at all effective in changing minds and especially changing hearts. And people find it annoying. (laughs) That's what science indicates. If you want to throw information at people, it'll be annoying to them and it will not change their mind. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. How about this one? It turns out instead what works is citing why you are right and someone else is wrong in a heated conversation. One of the most effective strategies you can use for changing someone's mind is finding areas where you agree. Yes. If you'd like to change someone's mind, listen to their crazy ideas as long as you can. And I'm calling them that because I've been there. (laughs) Listen as long as you can and ask enough questions until you find a point of agreement and go, oh, that's a really great point. I like that. Mm -hmm. You're right on that. Mm Mm-hmm. And that will open up the opportunity to actually change maybe their mind at some point. Another thing we can do is to be open to other people's perspectives. Like acknowledge our own confirmation bias. Like we have to own as Christians, I have confirmation bias. (laughs) I'm not talking about in the virgin birth or in the substitutionary atonement of Jesus and things like that. I'm just talking about you may have figured out how to live life as a Christian and you could be a little wrong on some of it. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, we believe that if we're sinners. And so you could be open to a non-Christian correcting you in something. Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-oh. What do you mean, oh, yeah? (laughs) What do do non-Christians know about anything, Ron? Oh, they live life on this same planet we do, in the same culture that we're living in. There's a lot of things that, that I don't know. And they, you know, they may know things I don't know. Just, you know, if they don't go to church or believe in Jesus, that doesn't mean that the rest of their life is total ignorance. Yeah. Um, And finally, it says, make new friends, people that are different than you. Yes. And it's going to help you change hearts and minds, including Mm yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's hard, but it's necessary. Yeah, I think the, the whole concept of trying rather than trying to change their heart, listen to what they believe. Let them try to change your heart. And as, you, as you're as you open to them, it's going to bring down their walls. You find those points where you agree, and then you start to build from there mm-hmm. and say, well, since we do agree on points A and B, we diverge on point C, and I can't understand how you get to point C my point C would be here, 
and and you can build out from there. You've developed a, a trust and a relationship rather than coming in and go, here's what I believe, and if you don't believe it, you're a moron. <laughs> Yeah, you need to stop viewing other people as your enemy, mm -hmm. and you need to let them know that you don't see them as the enemy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like Ron said, the, the walls are going to go up. You're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. And yet for so many years, we were taught to lead with, um, with debate. Mm -hmm. I was taught. I went to conferences and classes in church about here's how you defend the faith. Now, that's important information, but maybe we put it in the wrong order. Mm. I mean, again, we'd lead with it. Here, here's a gospel track. Let me tell you about why you're a sinner and why you need Jesus and why you're wrong about the, your entire philosophy of life. Ready? Go. <laughs> That's not welcoming. Science indicates and data indicates that that actually annoys people to throw information at them. Instead, what you ought to do is listen to them and find common ground. Mm -hmm. That sounds like capitulating. How could that be good evangelism? Because you're showing people that you care about them beyond yes. just winning your argument. Well, somebody might say, what could I possibly have in common with, let's just say, a Muslim? They're made in the image of God. Amen. We have a lot of um, patriarchal history in common. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have some hobbies in common. It's plenty yeah. of stuff. They're parents who love their children. Correct. A lot of things like that. Well, and even, um, it's going to sound radical, but you could agree with some things about Islam, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's similarities. Like, if you look at the five pillars of Islam... Uh, one of them is charity, alms, like giving to the poor. We agree with that. Another mm -hmm. one is that it's really important that you pray. Mm -hmm. Hey, we pray. Wow. We're two-fifths of the way there. Well, and then if you look at Hindus and Buddhists, they really think one of the major sources of problems in the world is greed. Mm -hmm. I would agree. That sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah, I agree mm -hmm. with that. But I think we're afraid to agree with people who have a different uh, worldview and a different religion than us. Like that somehow, if I agree with a Buddhist that greed is bad, I'm betraying Jesus. Truth is truth, no matter who says it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the thing, right? We have to believe that it's possible for someone who doesn't follow Christ to say true things and believe true things. The thing is, God has given us these desires for his righteousness, so it's only natural that certain tenets of what he teaches us are going to pop up in other religions, even if they're mm -hmm. not doing everything else correctly. They're searching for something, too, that, right. we, that we have searched for. And so somebody might go, well, when do we get to share our apologetics? When do we get to share truth about uh, that we believe? When they ask. But what if they don't? When you build rapport. But what if they don't ask? Yeah, when you build rapport, when you've made a relationship, when you have their trust. But what if they don't become a Christian? It's not on you. Hmm. You you sow the seeds, you have a relationship with them. If they ask, you answer their questions, you um, look for an opportunity to share. But ultimately, it's up to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, see, I wonder if this strategy that Psychology Today is indicating is actually research-based. Maybe this is one of the more effective ways for us as believers to engage in a culture that increasingly disagrees with us. What if we just sought common ground and built relationship mm. and let the Lord work out the rest? Mm -hmm. Just an idea.